coming up on today's show. We're talking basics here today. We are. You work with a lot of clients I know, and I'm sure there's not necessarily does everyone have a file drawer, right? And right. file folders even, right? right? What are some right. of the ways people store stuff outside of a file? Oh, cardboard boxes are always good. Yep. Yeah. The old shoe box. The shoe in the, box. In the seats in the shoe box. Baskets, right? manila envelopes. Uh, my favorite was a Walmart bag. Oh. Is a gentleman who was filing his will. He okay. didn't want to label it will. He wanted to re label it read when I'm dead. Oh, and that's what he wanted. That's what he wanted. And it totally made sense because the only person who was ever going to go in that file for the will would be someone after he's dead looking for Tips for setting up a basic filing system, today on Keeping You Organized. Hello and welcome to Keeping You Organized. Today, we're gonna get down to the basics. We are gonna help you set up a basic filing system. And to help us do that, we have Tammy Schatzko from WeLoveMesses.com. Tammy, welcome back to Keeping You Organized. Thanks for having me, John. Now, uh, we're talking basics here today. We are. You work with a lot of clients I know, and I'm sure there's not necessarily, does everyone have a file drawer, right? And right. file folders even, right? right? What are some right. of the ways people store stuff outside of a file? Oh, cardboard boxes are always good. Yep. Yeah. The old shoe box. The shoe the, box. The seats in the shoe box. Baskets, right? manila envelopes. Uh, my favorite was a Walmart bag. Oh. With holes in it, kind of, okay. for the year's stuff. Yep. I remember uh, we had a great aunt of ours, and after she passed away, we went into her house. Oh, boy. Uh, which she was uh, she was in her late 80s. She lived in this 13-room house. Oh, my goodness. Uh, by herself. And, you know, no one ever, like, kind of went there. So, and we started going through some of the upstairs bedrooms, and there were bags and bags and bags of stuff. You could barely walk through some of these rooms. Uh, one person in a 13-bedroom house. It was, wow. it was one of those old, old houses. But anyway, so uh, <laughs> that made me think about what you said about the bags. What was in the bags? I, I want to know. Like a, a, everything. <laughs> everything. I mean, every magazine that she <laughs> yes. ever got in, you know, over you know, 80 years. So It's like an archive, isn't it? It is, yes. yeah. A living, a living, living archive. archive. Yes. Okay, well, let's Sorry. just say it's maybe not that bad. But okay. um, you go into a client and they want to set up a filing mm -hmm. system. Mm -hmm. What are First of all, what do you need? What are the basics, uh, tools you need? Well, are we talking, I'm assuming we're talking home, like a yeah, home filing system? Yeah, a home file, and, and you know, primarily paper, yep. let's just say. Yep. I, of course, would like a file drawer. Okay. That's always optimum, although we've done rolling carts and things like that, just okay. so it's accessible. Okay. Uh, oftentimes, we do a dual system where we do more of the long-term storage off a little ways and have the, the stuff they need every day right at their fingertips. But yes, hanging files with... Um, uh, why can't I think of it? Hanging files with folders inside of them. Okay, yeah, is very interior helpful. files, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And we call it interior files. Right? No, I know what I'm talking yeah, about. Right. Why can't you? <laughs> that's right. So, okay. Um, so let's say we get some uh, files and stuff mm -hmm. together. Are, are there any rules of thumb as far as what we should save uh, when we set up a filing system versus what yes. we shouldn't? Or maybe short term and long term. I usually tell my clients, and I will tell them that I tend to err on the side of letting things go, but okay. I'm comfortable with that. So when we're setting up a system for someone, I say, if you would not feel comfortable letting this go, then don't, okay. let's save it. Because I would never want someone to get rid of something and then feel like they had to have it. However, that being said, in the age of electronics, we really don't need to keep bank statements, mm -hmm. things like that. So if people are comfortable letting them go, that's great. Right. I try to do a one in, one out for things like insurance policies, where you get the new one every so often, you can let the old one go, kind of like a self-purging okay. system. We talk a lot about that. Okay. Because then at the end of the year or every six months, you don't have to go through and try to purge right. out some of the paperwork. Now, how about, um, you know, there's different types of filing. You've got your drawer filing, mm -hmm. you've got your desktop filing. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you have any kind of criteria on what should be, you know, within a hand's reach? Yep. Anything within hand's reach, we consider that valuable real estate because okay. really, you know, if you're sitting at your desk, there's not a lot of room there and right. most of us have kitchen nooks or things like that, very small spaces. Right. So those are things that you should be accessing at least daily, if not weekly, monthly, those three right. criteria. If it's anything that you do every six months or you know once in a blue moon, mm -hmm. you don't need to have it right at your fingertips. It can be somewhere else if you don't have the room right there. Okay. If you have the room for all of it, great. It can okay. live right there. All right. So 
for for longer term storage, do you think people um, should have just like you put things in a box and then label the box number and try to come up with an index? Do you have a you system do for that. doing that, or what's personally? I have a rolling uh, two drawer file cart okay. in another room that we don't access very often, and in that I have manuals. I mean. Right. I don't need a manual very often. Uh, our tax information is in there by year for 10 okay. years. Things like that that I'm not going to go look at every day, probably okay. not even every year. Okay. Do you have a system for cleaning that out where eventually you mm -hmm. say, you know what, that's got to be, that's got to yep. go? My tax files are, are numbered zero through nine. Okay. So when I file the year 2000 okay. in the zero, it sits there, and then when 2010 rolled around, I let 2000 go and put 2010 oh, in there. Okay. I'm comfortable doing that. Right. Not everybody else is. Right. And you can't do a seven. You know, they say keep it back seven years. Yeah. It doesn't work to purge itself. Then you have to go back. <laughs> you have yeah. to do 10 years. Yeah, 10 is a nice, yeah. uh, it is even, a nice number. even number. Okay. So now when I file 2014, 2004 will go. Okay. And again, I'm comfortable with that. If you weren't comfortable, you could move it to a third location if you want okay. to keep it long term. You know, now that we're on the t subject of tax information and things like that, would you recommend a different way to deal with tax documents versus regular, you know, your bills, your papers, your letters, mm -hmm. and things like that? How how do how do you handle that, or recommend people use? I that? ask the client what makes sense to them. Okay. If it makes sense to you to file all tax docu all tax related documents in one folder that you access at tax time, yep. great. If it makes sense to you that they would be in different areas pertaining to whatever the subject matter is, mm -hmm. and you accumulate them at the end of the year and take them to okay. your tax preparer, however it makes sense to you. Because if I tell you to do it one way and you don't, that doesn't really resonate with you, you're not going to know where to look for it or it's going to be confusing or you're not going to file it. What about col using color uh, folders versus say a manila folder? Have you been in any uh, situations where there's a real good reason to use color? I think color speaks to a lot of people. Okay. I personally like black and pink. I, you know, that works for me. It makes me want to file. Hmm. However, I've used, you know, the basics, red, yellow, blue, yep. and have the client say, and green. Like green usually means money for people. Okay. So we use the green folders for financial stuff. Okay. Red usually means stop, you know, don't throw the stuff out. And that would be like wills, health care directives, okay. things like that. So if the color kind of speaks to them yeah. or it makes sense for them, then we use it. I'm kind of curious how you use black and pink. I just like That's, black and pink. So do you, is it just random every other or do you have no. all the pink ones in the front and the black yeah. ones in the back? Actually, come? yes. Okay. All the black and pink is my business. Okay. And then the icky colors are my personal. <laughs> oh, really? So that's how you do it. <laughs> that's how I but do it. But is there any rhyme or reason <laughs> no. to how you use them? Is this whatever's I next in like, the box? Yeah. You take what? What's they next? make me happy. Okay. And I think you should be happy if you have to file. Now, how do you label a black folder? With the little... With the um, white label? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Great. And you know, as far as labeling, since yep. you brought that up, I tell people you don't have to do the... You don't have to have a Martha Stewart perfect. And I mm. love Martha Stewart, but it does not have to be right. labeled. And I like to encourage people to label it what makes sense to you. So for example, over the years working with clients, I've had some interesting... <laughs> Interesting titles, but my favorite one was that I can say out loud is a gentleman who was filing his will. He okay. didn't want to label it will, he wanted to re label it read when I'm dead. Oh, and that's what he wanted. That's what he wanted, and it totally made sense because the only person who was ever going to go in that file for the will would be someone after he's dead looking for. Right. You know, it made sense to him, and it works, so. So let's why just not? say we've, we've taken all our papers out, and is that what you do? You set them in piles? Yep. And then. And then what is this the structure for setting up a file cabinet front to back? Do you go A to Z? Do you go mm -hmm. uh, A to Z by what? By the give us some uh, some file labeling you know okay. strategies. So you come to me with a box of papers that you need to set up a file system yeah. for. First, we do a gross sort, and usually I like to use the floor, okay. and we just kind of file it or we pile it. We literally pile it on the floor in categories that make sense to you. Like piles, right? Like like with like, yep. yeah. Maybe okay. the financial bank statements go here, maybe okay. your IRAs go over there, maybe your insurance is here, you know, okay. whatever you have. Right. Deeds, documents, important things are over here. Then we take each pile, because you've got like with like, okay. and kind of do a little bit more of a minor sort and kind of okay. figure out what's in there. And then we talk, do you need to have one file folder that just says banking? Is that enough for you? Mm -hmm. Or do you need to put interior folders in there with the different bank accounts and things like right. that? It depends on how much you're gonna search that. If you're the type of person that really doesn't go back through your stuff, you could just drop it in one big folder and it would be okay. okay. It's off the floor, it's easy to get to. However, 
most people like to have the interior folders with different bank accounts or you know cars or things like that. Right, so they have the different, uh, and then what about uh, organizing by subject, or do you think just a, s a straight A to Z? I, I mean, think it again. I you know depends on the person okay. because you really want the file system to work for you. It okay. doesn't matter if it makes sense to me because I'm not okay. the one that's got to find anything. I tend to organize by subject. So for example, I'll have insurance, and then in there there'll be auto, health, um, you know, disability. Those types of insurance right. folders within that, okay. and I don't usually label them by company because what I find out is if you label it by company and then you change companies, the system kind of breaks down mm -hmm. because you don't take that extra step. Even though it's silly, you don't make a new folder for it, so okay. it sits out. So I just label it by type. All right. I do have clients that do A to Z and that works just fine. As long as they know if it's called the Hartford Company, for example, do you label it, do you put it under T or H? I they, don't know. What do you do? Well, <laughs> you ask I don't. Them, right? I ask them. I okay. would put it under Hartford, okay. but maybe they'd put it under the. So you right. have to have those discussions if you're working with someone else. You have okay. to find those things out. If you're just doing it, you just label it the way you think about it and pop it in there, and you're good. It's golden. Great. All right, we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we're going to get into some more stories about some filing challenges that maybe some of your clients have, and some more tips for basic filing. How do you set it up? And we'll be right back. When you've got it together, everyone can tell. Your confidence is obvious. Introducing Viewables.com from Smeed. Use the Viewables labeling system to transform your drawer of hanging files into a tidy, organized filing system. Using the premium hanging folder tabs, see the label from the front, top, and back. It's easy. Access Viewables.com from any computer, tablet, or internet-enabled smartphone. Let's make some labels. It's free, and there's nothing to download or install. Choose the label type and format your label just the way you want. You can even add index characters or icons for distinctive filing. Set up a free Viewables Cloud account and your secure login lets you save your projects for convenient access from any computer. And with Viewables multi-purpose labels, you can use one label for any type of file, including hanging folders, top tab folders, super tab folders, or oversize items like notebooks and file boxes. Upload a list of file headings and print your complete set of labels in moments. There's even a library of templates for commonly used label sets. It's never been easier to set up neat looking files that have easy to read headings and efficient color codes. Obviously organized. Viewables.com From Smeed, keeping you organized. We are back now on Keeping You Organized talking about basic filing tips. Everything from how do you set up a file box or file uh, uh, drawer, uh, what kind of files to use. We've learned now that Tammy Schatzko, who's with us from WeLoveMesses.com, likes black and pink. Okay, you got to give us the story. Why? I don't know. There's got to be a story behind black and pink All folders. All right, I don't know. I like the color black. My mom said when I was 15, I wanted to paint my room black, and she always regrets that she didn't oh. let me do it. I don't know. I just think it's a stunning color. It's yeah. solid. It's And then the pink is just it's pretty. It's a nice It's it a is nice, a nice balance. contrast. Okay. I, it works for me. Great. Okay. I, I like to file. Yeah. I am kind of a paper freak, but I don't yeah. really like to file my own stuff. Yeah. Well, how about some stories of clients who use color? Because mm -hmm. we hear all kinds of stories sure. from different people that, you know, they, uh, they'll they run all over town to find like that black or yes. that, that certain yes. color folder because there's some reason why they do that. What are some reasons that people use color in I filing? I think it speaks to them, like mm -hmm. I mentioned earlier, like red usually means stop. Uh, and it's just like my story about the color painting my walls black. Somewhere in their mind, mm -hmm. they associate a color with a memory, which right. then means something when they're filing. Right. And you don't necessarily have to know what that memory is or figure out the logic. You just have to know that that's what they need to right. use. Now, this is a, a, a preference question. Some mm -hmm. people like the, you know, the third cut tabs mm -hmm. where they have a, you know, nice, yes. nice. But other people like what's called straight line filing, yes. where you have all of the things in one one tab position, as yes. a, uh, insiders would call it. What uh, what do you like? And uh, I know you're gonna, your answer is going to be, it depends on what the customer writes, right? But No, but what, you asked me what I like. Okay, what do you like? How do you set up your uh, files? Like I that? like straight line okay. because with the third 
cuts, if you change or add or move something, you have to change them all. Right, yeah. Which again is not a big deal, but most people don't really like filing and right. they just want it done, but they want it to look semi-nice. Right. So the straight line works well. Right. However, the third line or third cut is much more visible too. Okay. Now you know on the market there's a lot of these you know pre-made filing yep. systems uh, which is kind of nice because it gives you something to work with yes. but on the other hand they don't always fit perfectly. Exactly. How can you modify something like that to make it work for you? You can. I think one of the things that happens with marketing or when you walk into a store is that you see the system and it looks wonderful and it makes semi sense and you can add and subtract mm -hmm. and customize it but when we get it home and we start putting our own papers in there all of a sudden there's a break down somewhere. Mm -hmm. It just isn't quite clicking. And I walk into those kind of systems all the time where they've got it half set up, but it really isn't flowing for them. It doesn't feel right. Mm -hmm. So we really kind of just talk about what doesn't feel right. Are you not liking the titles? Let's change the labeling. It doesn't have to say just because they chose a mm -hmm. title doesn't mean that you have to go with that. You can change it. You can change the structure. You can change the size and the direction of what's being filed. Maybe you don't want to do it alphabetically. Maybe you want to do it by subject. Mm -hmm. Make the systems work. Use the product. Use the bones of the system. Right. But make it work for you. Dress it up the way you want to. Let's talk about one of the maybe the big filing challenges that one of your clients have had. Tell us the backstory of, of kind of what it was like before you got in there and what are some of the things you did to, to mm -hmm. straighten it out and make it happen. I worked with a lady recently who had some, I think it was one, two, like three years of backlog of things that hadn't really been, it was a business, but it hadn't really been sorted. It was mm. just kind of in boxes. Mm -hmm. And we did the system where we took the floor mm. and literally took every piece of paper and went through every single thing and piled it by subject. Mm -hmm. Then we got some nice boxes and went back in and started filing them that way. Okay. And in the meantime, we were able to take out unnecessary things like receipts that didn't matter, bank statements that she didn't need to keep because she mm -hmm. had online. So we really reduced the amount of paper she was keeping into a manageable amount. Mm. And she also had the resources at her fingertips that she needed. And did that end up in boxes or did you put it in file cabinets? Well, I, when I said boxes, I meant that they were the, the tine with the handle okay. on top and she is going to put them in file cabinets. But having the portability while you're doing that massive right. sort is very nice and having hanging files to drop them in that slide back and forth so that you can adjust and move. Mm -hmm. Anything you can do to physically make it easier. And, and if you were to say uh, to somebody, uh, you know, here's a couple of uh, products that I like, you know, filing types of products uh, that really help you get into the filing quicker. Mm -hmm. What would what were some of those things that you recommended? Well, I like the stadium file. Okay. I, I really like the visual piece of that because I have a lot of clients who don't like it in desk drawers. Yeah. They don't like to have it out of sight, out of mind. And yeah. so that is a nice structure to have on your desk. It's contained mm -hmm. and it's neat and they yeah. can drop it in the slots. That's one that I use a lot. Yeah, yeah, we use that a lot even here at, uh, at the company. It, it is a nice thing because some people, I think what happens is you, you, you hit on this out of sight, out of yes. mind thing. You yes. know, they feel if they move it and file it, they're going to forget about it yeah. and they'll they'll screw up or do something yeah. but at least if you can have your important documents that you're working on you know that week or the real yes. urgent ones um, any other basic filing tips before we go no really my favorite is to label it that what makes sense to you yeah so everybody have got fun with it i mean why not filing is not fun for most people except me so yeah. why not have a good time with it do you ever like uh, come up with a uh like a filing index or a style guide or something so that if you forget That's a good your idea yeah well I, I did that one time with uh with colors you know too yep. again like yep. oh you know the the this project is going to have this color. Yes, I, mean, I think that's a great idea. But you might again, forget your own color. system. That's why I thought if you had then a Then it's too complex. Yes. And when we were talking about coloring earlier too, I wanted to say that sometimes we have too many choices yes. and we need to narrow it down because yeah. you could define 14 different colors and then you're going to have a problem. Right. Well, we're going to wrap it up here, okay. but before we go, I want to have you tell people about WeLoveMesses.com, your yep. business and, and what kinds of work you do. And are you just up there in Northern Minnesota or can you work with someone in California? I could work with someone in California. I would love to work with someone in Hawaii. Yes. Not virtually. Especially if they, yeah, especially <laughs> if they fly you there, right? Yes, too. Yes. yes. So I have my website. I try to publish a blog every Thursday and okay. I try to do tips, hints, 
Usually I try to do it around whatever's happening during the month and things mm -hmm. like that. But it's, it's a great way to keep in touch with people and I'm always looking for ideas and I can help people virtually. Okay. It's a great way. Great. And you do both uh, residential and commercial? Yes. And I do love paper. I really, really love paper. But what you really love is Mess. messes. We love Messy mess paper. That's right. All right, Tammy. Well, we'll have you back on another program. Okay. Thank you for giving us those basic filing tips. And now your file drawer should be all ready to go. And we'll catch you next time on Keeping You Organized. Coming up next time on Keeping You Organized. It's the end of the summer and we are at the end of season number two. On today's program, we're going to rewind all the way back and look at highlights from the entire season. We'll hear tips from some of the top professional organizers in the nation.